the moment you've all been waiting for, CC submission. Will we fail or will we do good? You'll see, I already know. Look at that. Here we go. It's like Christmas morning, you know? You don't know where you're gonna get from uh, uh, Old Saint Uncle John Albanese, you know? So, the seated half didn't cack. The Cali did cack. I said this one had a 50-50 shot. I said this one, absolutely not. 1926 Indian, I said absolutely not. There's a scratch on the front and the back. I said 50-50 on the, uh, the 99.0, but I guess they didn't like it. Let's see here. Texas, got some smudgy stuff on it. I said it wasn't. Here's the whammy. Here's the Sammy, whammy, bammy, chammy. 1877cc, $20 lib. It passed, baby. It passed. This is ours. We paid for this, we bought this, and it passed. That is very good, very good. It's hard to find that coin, and especially now in CAC. So, we got two other, three other gold coins. We got a fail here, fail here, and last but not least, big old fail there, so. Sometimes, you don't get what you want, and sometimes, you get a little bit of what you want. Right now, got a very little bit of what we want, but we learned a lot from this submission, and uh, we also got a pretty awesome coin, CAC stickered. Very happy about that. Um, but yeah, overall, a decent submission. Wish more could have gotten through, but uh, that's what the next submission's for. So to put that in perspective, this 77cc and XF45 CAC just sold at auction for $9,000. You know, a lot of people say that CAC has no value, but when they put them on the marketplace and people bid on them, they end up paying significantly more, especially for coins that you don't see with the sticker. This coin, um, I would say in this grade, XF40, it's around a $5,000, $5,500 coin, and we paid more than that. Um, and that's for coins that didn't sticker. But if this coin, when it does sticker, when it did sticker, it was a great day because People are paying strong money for coins like this. I would say retail price for this coin is around 8,000 now, and we'll probably take a number around 7,500 is, is my guess, um, when everything's all said and done. But definitely a win. Sometimes you have to send a lot of coins out, but sometimes the one coin makes all the difference. So, you know, we're on the fitness journey, we're on the health journey, but I wanted to show you what guys, what I uh, got just for uh, us working hard this week. Casey's gonna eat something else later this week, but went to the roadhouse, you know? When you're making a decent amount of money, some people go buy watches and cars and house loans, and this is what I got. 16 ounce sirloin, 123 grams of protein. Got a potato here, got sauteed onions, and uh, that's, that's my victory for this week. Once I eat this, I'm just gonna continue to plow through Sell more coins, buy more coins, make more content. Just enjoy life, but it's little things, you know? Hey guys, it's Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. First tip we're gonna be talking to you guys about today is tint, window tint. This baby blue right here, we just got her detailed. Uh, every car that we buy, we wanna get it detailed because it just keeps the car in good shape, preventative maintenance, just like anything else, oil changes, uh, fluids being uh, filled up. But Let's show you guys something that we use all the time for our business if we're transporting coins or taking bullion to some people. Um, Casey's idea was to get this car detailed and tinted. And so I thought it was too much money. I thought it wasn't worth it. And ever since we used it, boy, was I wrong. So you can see on the, on the front here, there's a good amount of tint. This is like the legal requirement. You can't have it completely limoed out, which means limoed out is, is right here. So 
There's, this is the max amount of tint you could have. So if a police officer comes up to the front of your vehicle, they can at least see your face. But back here is limo tint. And limo tint's throughout the rest of the car. So if you're transporting, like I said, coins to a coin show, or if you're transporting bullion or whatever else, nobody knows what you have in your car or not in your car. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick what you see when I get in the car. Do you see me? Casey, just try to, try to get me. So, definitely a good uh, use of our uh, our funds there. If we open up the car, I'm going to throw up the detailer's information right here if you're in the Houston area and need your car detailed. Um, everything is you know, in tip-top shape. Everything on the outside, everything on the inside is super clean. It smells nice. Just keeping all the leather where it needs to be as well. I mean... If you feel it's really soft now, because I think they put some chemical on it. And uh, let's go to the back here. I think they wet backed all the stuff, right, Casey? Yeah, so they wet backed everything here. Um, everything's where it, where it needs to be. It's all clean. Um, and they just did a really stand up job. This is an older car, but it's a dependable car. It'll get you out of a lot of situations that you're uh, that you might run into. So definitely awesome. Just inspecting some coins that we got in today in the mail. 1928 P-Star. Uh, AU58 definitely has slid across the counter a few times. There's one spot right underneath the T and Trust. But overall, a pretty PQ coin. And then we're going to show you the other coin. So sometimes there's a difference in price. And, and that's just based on eye appeal. There's a big gouge right in kind of the, the face of the Morgan dollar there. And on the back, which kind of bothers me a little bit, is a uh, scratch right underneath the A. This one was passed through, but when we offer it, we're going to be offering it under comps. Because, honestly, there's there's coins that desire and demand the certain amount of money, like full retail. And then there's some that need to go a little bit back of comps, just because they're not as uh, high in eye appeal. So most of the time when someone's looking for a peace dollar, especially a key date, like I said, they want a blast white looking, really nice, attractive coin. I think this one's pretty close to that. And if we're looking at the 95.0, in the same circumstance, there is kind of some blackness above the U and the R. Not trying to dog our coins that we buy, but if we do offer a coin that we're not super excited about, most of the time we're gonna be offering it back at comps. So it's around 10.30 here and I had a guy reach out to us, gave us a phone call and he said, should I or shouldn't I send these coins to CAC? And he lives local to us. And so I said, I would personally, since we're, we live local and we could possibly meet up and he collects gold pieces that uh, I could write up what I find that are big issues with the coins. Um, and basically all I'm trying to do really is um, not really dog his coins, but tell him if he's wasting his time or if he has a shot at CAC when he sends him there. Because ultimately, you don't want to send a coin to CAC, and you obviously know it won't sticker. If there's a scratch or a rim ding or the strike is too soft, there's certain things that go into, um, you know, just things that are blatant that I could spot out from what I see, sometimes a collector just comes to a show and says, I like that coin, I'm gonna buy that coin. And then later, CAC comes into effect where they're like, oh, what if I send these coins? They're really nice. And then sometimes they're nice, sometimes they're not so nice. And I figured out a lot of gold coins are not so nice. And so, uh, the 85S Gold Lib in PCGS Mint State 62, um, there appears to be a rim ding on the reverse at six o'clock. It's not six o'clock, it's, it's noon actually. And um, that for me held that coin out. Uh, I'm just gonna run through a few of these just so you guys can learn a little bit about what I'm talking about. Um, there's a 1924 Saint Guns that ends in 206. Uh, big scratches on the obverse, right on the details. And then it looks like it might've been in a jewelry piece. So there are some kind of clasp marks on the rim at nine and 11 o'clock on the obverse. And so that for me was a little bit of an issue. Um, 
There's a 1927 St. Gons MNC 65 Plus. There's toning spots. I don't know what type of spots that, that CAC will see them as, but I know that most of the time with gold, having toning spots, they never sticker those coins. So trying to save the collector some time here. It's a little sneak peek of sometimes what we do. We don't do this for every customer, but when you see there's one that could be a possible serious one um, and uh, someone that you might be able to work with locally, that's something that's good. And the reason why I'm talking about someone that's local is because um, what I've heard from bigger dealers and people all around the United States is that they buy coins that are really, really nice at shows, they bring them back to their shop and they sell them locally. And selling them locally, what does that do for you rather than sending them to New York or California? Is that you know where the coins are. You know that they're gonna be in someone's collection for a certain while and say they wanna come back in and trade up. Or say, uh, the family trusts you so much as a coin dealer from working with that collector for all those years. They come back later and they say, hey, we're just ready to liquidate in case of anything were to happen. And so uh, focus on those local connections, even if you don't have a shop, we're trying to do so. We hope this is helpful to you.